Hi there and welcome back to the channel. Let's get right into it. To upload supplier invoices in SAP s using Fiori, we will navigate to the application called Import Supplier Invoices. Select this application over here. If you are not sure whether you are on the right application, you can simply click on your user icon, click on About and over here you will find the app ID. If you can't see this application at all, then this is because you must assign the respective user roles to your user first. You will find those user roles in the Fiori Reference Apps Library. I will leave you a link in the description of this video. Okay, now we will download a template. Click on Download, select the language and then click on Download. Now open the template and it should look like this. We will go through the different columns from left to right. First of all, you must insert an invoice ID. This is used to separate different invoices because you can upload many invoices at once with this application. So for instance, the first invoice could get the ID 1, the second 2, the third 3 and so on. For now, we'll just create one invoice. Now you must insert a company code and a transaction. So whether you want to post an invoice or a credit memo. We will select one for invoice for now. Then you must insert the invoicing party. The invoicing party will be your business partner. By the way, I have a whole playlist about the business partner. I will leave you the link in the description of this video. Let's just insert one. Then we insert a reference, a document date as well as a posting date and we must insert a document type. For importing supply invoices, the normal document type is KR. Let's go to the right a bit. You can see I could insert a document header text, but this is not mandatory. All the mandatory fields are marked with this asterisk over here. However, I must insert a currency, let's just say Euro, and a gross invoice amount, let's just say 1400. Let me go a bit more to the right. You can see between the column L and the column BM, there are several columns hidden right now. Let me just unhide them. And now you can see many more fields that could be filled, but we don't necessarily need to fill them such as the payment method, terms of payment and so on. There's just one indicator I want to fill, which is the tax code. Let's say V0 for now. Okay, we go further to the right up until we see our line item details. So as you know, our credit position will be the supplier. However, the debit position we must fill over here. So this is equivalent to filling the different line items. Let's insert the company code again. And for the amount, we will now say 1,190, just so that I can show you something later on. Item text test. And then we must state whether it's a debit or credit. We will say debit. The credit will be the supplier position. Then we must insert an account. I will just take an expense account. The item text is not mandatory. And then we must say whether it should be a debit or a credit position. For now, we will say debit position. The credit position will be the supplier we filled on the left hand side. For the amount in document currency, I will now say 1,190. As you know, for the supplier position, I said 1,400 and now I say 1,190. So there's a big difference. And I will show you how to handle this in a second. We will insert the same text code V0 and then we must insert an assignment. So I will just assign a cost center and that's basically it. Just one more little remark. If you want to insert more line items, you would simply do it like that. Copy the lines, paste them over here and so on. Copy the line, paste it over here and so on. And on the right hand side, you would state here that you are referring to the same invoice ID. So one and one again and also you copy this information over here. This way you can create a supplier invoice with multiple line items. Okay, that's basically it. Now save it and then close the view. Now we can click on browse and then select the Excel file and click on open. Now you can see one item appeared in our work list. The system has two checks. The first check will be when we upload the supplier invoice. So for instance, if we made huge mistakes like we didn't fill lots of information, then the system will already hinder us from uploading this invoice. However, if this worked, then there's another check. As you can see, I can mark this line and click on check. And now we get an error message. One invoice contains errors, correct your errors and then post the invoice. We can either click on OK or we can click on show log. Let's do the latter one. Here you can now see the balance is not zero. 
As said, on our supplier line, the credit was 1,400 and on the debit side, it was 1,190. So there's a difference of 210. You can also click on this one to display more information. And also here, if we have multiple error messages, we can sort them by the severity or also search over here. Let's now go back. And now you have two different options. Either you can delete this work list via the delete button, correct the Excel file and upload it again, and then try to post it. Or you can also click here on the arrow and jump into the application called create supplier invoice. Here we could now manually adjust our information. Just to give you a quick overview, you can see a different tabs. In the general information, we store our basic data like the transaction type, so either invoice, credit memo, or even subsequent debit or credit, the company code, cross amount, and then our posting and invoice dates, as well as the invoice party and reference. On the purchasing document references tab, we could even include here purchase order information, but this is only possible in this manual application, so to say. So the Excel file we just uploaded, there it is only possible to insert plain financial information for an invoice or a credit memo without any relation to a purchasing order or a scheduling agreement. For now, this is fine. Let's go to GL account line items. Here you can see the debit position I inserted and the amount. And as you can see, I could click on show details so that even more information is being displayed like the tax code we inserted. And also you can see the cost center assignment and the profit center and functional area that were derived automatically. We can go to the tax section. However, I inserted an input tax non-taxable so there is no separate text amount being displayed. In the payment information, we see our payment terms, the baseline date for the calculation of discounts and also payment methods and so on. We can even include unplanned delivery costs, insert notes or insert attachments. Now you can see here on the left side, there is the error message that the balance is not zero. So let me just go up a bit. I will now include here an amount of 1,400 press on enter and then click on check again. And now you can see the invoice was successfully checked. So we could post the invoice to the system. You can also click on simulate to see the actual accounting entries. Let's go back. We can as always hold or park our invoice, save for now or even delete it. And in the end, we can click on post. Let's do this. Now you can see the document was created successfully. And here's the number, we can click on this one to display the supplier invoice with all the necessary information. From here, we could also reverse the invoice or we can click here on journal entries, which will now take us to an application where we can see the process flow and our invoice received as well as the journal entry that was posted in the financial accounting. Okay, this marks the end of the video. I hope you liked it. If so, then please subscribe to the channel and activate the bell. See you next time.